good morning. Uh, this is uh, Focus on Parliament. Uh, Demiano Masesa is my name. I'm here to ensure that uh, we bring you conversations around Parliament on this show that happens uh, every Saturday here on uh, Civic Space TV. Uh, we have this show running and I hope that uh, you keep part of these conversations happening around Parliament. We need to bring you updates around Parliament and everything around the country. Please keep with us, uh, especially on the Civic Space TV. Uh, different programs run every week and uh, we are happy that your live audience, your our audience out there that give us feedback on every uh, step of our journey here. Uh, thank you very much for following us and being with us all the time. And uh, this conversation today, we want to uh, put a spotlight into uh, the government uh, borrowing of uh, 1.7 trillion uh, from uh, private lenders. But also there was uh, a move by parliament on the, on the pension and, uh, and the salary increment. So we also need to touch a bit of that. Uh, to discuss this and much more, I'm joined by uh, Dr. Sarah Birete. Uh, she's the executive director with the Center for Constitutional Governance. Uh, Sarah, welcome. Thank you, and uh, good morning. Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, following Sarah is uh, Brian Atfire. He's uh, the executive director for AIFE. AIFE is uh, African Initiative on Food Security and the Environment. Yeah. And people were fighting the eco. <laughs> <laughs> we are stopping. But, but you're, you're good. almost losing. Yeah, we are going to stop it. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. So it's the day about things. Into eco things. <laughs> And uh, finally is uh, Timothy Chevonges. Uh, Timothy works with the Parliament Watch. Timothy, you're welcome. Thank you, Damian. Yeah. Good morning to all viewers. Yeah, and uh, Timothy is always with us here as a regular panelist. Uh, and uh, right into the conversation, uh, probably I'll need to start with you, uh, Sarah. Uh, objective two of uh, the Charter of Fiscal Responsibility uh, calls for maintenance and prudent and sustainable levels of, levels of public debt. We want to know is government following some of these provisions in the in the charter there has been controversy on the amount of public debt bank of uganda put the rate in their late in their last state of the economy report put the rate at 54 percent of gdp the minister of finance keeps giving a, a political figure that is convenient for the public to, to accept. And uh, recently, Parliament, towards the end of the last session, discovered that there were debts which were not declared by, by Minister of Finance. If you go by the Charter of Fiscal Responsibility, which is a under, under Section 3, 3 to 5 of the Public Finance Management Act, a new government after taking oath after elections mm. in the first three months must produce a five-year charter of fiscal responsibility mm -hmm. as an indication of how the regime will behave in the five years in terms of fiscal discipline, in terms of focus, in terms of borrowing limits, as well as how they intend to balance and, and develop the economy. This charter was presented in October instead of August, where the, the three months of a new government would have elapsed. But understandably so, because of maybe the changes that happened with the accounting officers of government, the permanent secretaries reshuffled. So when you have contradicting figures mm -hmm. as to what money we owe private and public lenders as a country, then it becomes difficult even to discuss whether we are conforming to the charter. Because according to the charter in this budget, our borrowing should have been around 51%. Mm -hmm. And the, it would shoot slightly up to 52 53% maximum and then slope down backwards mm -hmm. and the reason for that was given the financial instability caused by covid and other external factors so we don't know if i use the bank of uganda figure mm -hmm. as, as a given in june by then our public the borrowing was at 54 percent of gdp mm -hmm. 
and uh, we have since borrowed even after that. Mm -hmm. So you would expect that it should be above. But the Minister of Finance says it's at 49 with the loans that were approved yesterday. So which figures do you believe? Mm -hmm. As a, a citizen working on governance, I'm really conflicted on who to believe. And I tend to lie on the side of Bank of Uganda because these are professionals with the limited politics and they would have no reason to, to manufacture political figures. Mm -hmm. So if you go by that estimation, then our public debt might be at 56%. And uh, if government was honest mm -hmm. with the figures to make sure Ugandans know the extent of their liability, then I think it would be better, even in terms of demanding that we cut our court according to the size of our growth. Mm -hmm. Because some of the things that the government spends money on do not make sense to the people. Just before the 1.7 trillion loan requests that were tabled in Parliament, there was a supplementary budget which did not go through or did not need the approval of, of Parliament because government is allowed under the Act again, Public Finance Management Act, to do reallocation of the budget to up to 3%. Mm. In this reallocation, 1.4 trillion money was reorganized internally by finance. And part of that went into really very serious issues, like Munyonyo uh, to build an extravagant bar, uh, Atiang Sugar Factory, and the other money went to State House. And the State House has a budget of which they spend 1.8 billion per day. Mm -hmm. And these are two people with their domestic workers, the president, his wife, and their staff. They spend 1.86 billion per day. In addition, the wife gets Sarah as a minister, which should take care of her bills. So ideally, you would have one person, the president, because the wife draws another money mm -hmm. from the consolidated fund for, by virtue of being a minister of education. So you have one individual spending 1.8 billion, but he needed additional money in a supplement, a supplementary budget out of the 3% reorganization. So are we really serious as a country? Are we focusing on things that are of importance to the people? Are we spending on things that can develop this country? Mm -hmm. Maybe as I conclude, it, it, I think it's important for the viewers to know that during Chogam, government spent money buying 48% shares in Commonwealth Resort and the addition in Munyonyo that is known as Commonwealth Conference Center mm -hmm. should have been a private public partnership. But during the audit of Jogam funds, Speaker Resort Munyonyo said they were not aware about yeah, any purchase, did. yet they, they pocketed the money from a taxpayer. And these are the same people that the government added money mm -hmm. in unknown arrangement, because I don't think there is a public-private partnership for that money that they've given to Sudir mm -hmm. to build an extravagant bar, which they are disguising with a beautiful name or a sexy name as a marina. <laughs> uh, so, so, so Sarah, Sarah uh, gives back of Uganda. You see, you see, I don't believe in anything. I, I have failed to believe in anything called Uganda. Mm. And uh, the reason is that even at the Bank of Uganda, they can be coerced to say, they can actually be coerced to collect that figure anytime from now. Mm. If, if noise comes and says, you see, you know, because, because they, 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 there is an insatiable need to, to borrow and uh, steer and, and plan. Mm. And when, 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 they, when, it, when it plan the country, you cannot start counting what the country can have and what it cannot have. Because these people are not working for you as mm. citizens. Forget and think they will borrow while thinking about you, about your children, about the education system, about everything. It's wrong. They are borrowing to, to, to steer. So, but now we are making a cow that has, that has not been fed 
and now they have to get uh, blood from it. Now time for blood has come, prepare, and they get the blood instead of milk. Mm. And, and that's it. Mm. <laughs> okay, I'll get back shortly, but I need to get Chemonges. Mm. Maybe you're weighing the mood around Parliament by now, because now we are... Uh, Parliament is back into into running, and uh, just this week, of course, they approved the 1.7 trillion, and the, the of course government wants it on the infrastructure and all these other budgetary uh, uh, deficits that are out there. So I want I want to know is this borrowing consistent, probably with the medium term expenditure framework of uh, the national development plan that they laid out? So thank you, Damian. Mm -hmm. I think. The, the the biggest discussion is in how this money is spent, mm. the terms in which we get some of these loans, yes. and how they are eventually, the terms in terms of how they it's used up. Mm. We find we have we have we have uh, we have loans which have not which are borrowed but they are not spent. Mm. We have loans being borrowed within the country, that's for the private within the country, mm. with, uh, which, which, which constrains the, the borrowing capacity of the citizens. Mm. And so you, you, you take note that this is a conversation that we are not likely to get out if, if some of the concerns which are being raised are addressed. I choose to, to believe that uh, within the mandate of parliament, they are, they are mandated to ensure that uh, they approve. And even as they, they approve, there are a number of things that they should be able to consider, the sustainability of, of, of these loans. I know that uh, as, as the budget was being passed, one of the sources of, uh, of the money that would finance the budget was on the loan, or through loans, for which we, th there's still a lot of discussion on where they get these loans, how they should be eventually executed. Mm -hmm. And so it, 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 it is fairly, a very weird question as Ugandans we find ourselves that uh, loans are borrowed. There seems not to be a clear way in which they are they are, they are spent. You have concerns the the, the 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 executive and the government calling for 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 guards, Yet there is there, there are other areas where the same money is uh, is spent. So I think that the discussion really is on how we can use the, the limited resources which we have, mm -hmm. even those that we borrow how they are clearly spent in a more transparent and a more clear way. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, as a country, we have a lot of resources. There are, there are concerns in the taxation system, in the, in the regime there. But when it comes to loan, it is, it is uh, you, you find Bank of Uganda saying, A, you have finance saying, B, yet the idea that they should be streamlining in the same path. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a very weird, space where we find ourselves, but strictly on parliament mandate. My reading is that um, the, the, the ruling government is, 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 is geared towards achieving their desired goals. And so sometimes with the numbers which it has in parliament, the objectivity in terms of how some of these loans are processed, they are, they are more processed with, with a biased mind towards the party mm -hmm. and towards the how the, the ruling government should should operate, which disfavors the objectivity and how some of these loans should should be borrowed. And so and also the other point on the on the issue of having more loans borrowed locally, because this one is being borrowed from the, the 1.7 is being borrowed from Standard Chartered Bank. Mm. I know that uh, Standard Chartered is an international it's an international bank, but ideally there has to be a deliberate effort and action by government to ensure that it, it's, it, it, it withdraws from local borrowing to allow for those of us who would want to borrow, get the same, because the interest goes high when government and the citizens are competing in the same space. Mm -hmm. yeah. in, interesting. Uh, the borrowing can be there, and probably I want to bring in uh, Brian. The borrowing could be, in some, in some way, someone would say it's okay or something, but... Uh, would want to understand is there efficiency probably and effectiveness in the in the in the and the value for money uh, from the borrowed funds have you, have you heard about the nine million us dollars mm -hmm. of a broker in that borrowing process that as, as a kickback they, they, no there is what they call processing of the, of the that processing, role, mm. the processing. That, that, that's when they can just like say it's sex say it's processing but it's money for brokers mm. so if 
if i am going to get if me if he are going to get 9 million dollars mm. from such a process we can even bribe mps we can even go and uh, influence finance and everybody mm. because even if we inject in 1 million dollars as in terms of bribing we are sure we shall remain with it even if we bribe using four so it's 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 a, it's a, there, are, there are deals some mm. some of the borrowing what is saying that the borrowing are, are not spend it it's because there is a broker who wants his cut and the thing has to happen there and then mm. for them to have their money because they have not invested in it much but if it happens they get money so they hold processing of loans and everything but it's it's, it's literally uh, money for brokers and, and you know how a broker will force you to buy land mm. even if it is not fertile for them to get their cut whether you go and build whether tomorrow uh, when it takes the land it's okay so that's that's where uganda is they they are they are brokers in and when you go when you want to investigate them tomorrow you hear uh the same people who have been abusing uganda are the same people who are the brokers of, of such loans so about the efficiency of, of uh, you cannot ha there is nothing like efficiency in Uganda in terms of spending taxpayers money mm. uh, because 1.8 billion kameza money every day of an old man of 78 is sickening itself it's not an investment it's nothing mm -hmm. you, you 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 then then but you remember that uh, our our school going children get 4400 as fees from government every time so initially, a, a guy who drives a border border, I don't give that, that example. A guy who drives a border border give, gives the government 1,400 per liter of fuel. He takes about 10 liters in maybe two days. Therefore, he contributes about, that's 14,000. In a week, about, about uh, 30,000 to government. But his child is given 4,400. So there can't be, we can't talk about efficiency in such a system where one old man is invest, you invest in him uh, for a day, 1.8 billion, but a young kid who needs milk, everything, school, going children, books, just give them 4,400 as contribution to his fees. Who gets educated for three months on 4,400 apart from Ugandan going children? Mm -hmm. That's what they give you, these UP people, you hear them saying, we're waiting for capitation grant. How much? It's about maybe 1 million for some schools, 3 million. That's what they're all waiting for. So you cannot have, if you have such a system, there's nothing like efficiency. You should actually, people who discuss parliament, as, mm -hmm. as uh, I was telling him before we came to the show, there cannot be a parliament that has a tunnel from the president's office to parliament. That's not parliament. Even if they don't, even if they actually, even if they did want, to pass, you're, say, you're saying that uh, they, maybe they they want to pass using partisan partisan eyes. Even if all MPs in Parliament were FDC, DP, and NUP, they can sit there and they force them to, to vote. If they do not want, Parliament can be uh, disbanded. It's only the numbers are not are not numbers to make them vote on the issues. It's numbers to easily cajole. It's not that these are not are not brilliant. They are. But what, what do they do? They, have, they, they know what the consequences are, but also there is a bribery in, in those corridors of parliament. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and therefore, the, the issue of efficiency, because we, we cannot have NRM or seven government of Uganda and talk about efficiency in one sentence. It's, it's, it's something very wrong, because there's no efficiency here. Mm -hmm. We are talking about a group that is, is just, like I said, just plundering. So, so whatever they do, they, if they cannot follow, I hear the chat, if they cannot follow their own constitution, if they cannot follow the constitution that is supreme, how can they follow a chapter? How can they follow an, uh, uh, the Fawah Finance Act? They will not follow those ones. First of all, do they honor the constitution itself? The answer is no. So if they cannot honor the constitution that is supreme, how can they honor a chapter, a policy statement? And there is nothing like, there is something that, that is, this one was talking as if there is an idea that they want to do things and they force MPs to vote because they want to achieve some things. Mm -hmm. What they want to achieve is steal our money, not achieve anything, or plan that it, or... Because, because this is the same money. You had, they just say, almost half of our budget is, 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 is plundered, is taken. Now, you are in the middle, and this goal here had, had been saying, we shall, in, during here, we're going to remove, there, there is nothing like, um, we're not going to allow things like uh, supplementary budgets, what? Then overnight, the man has a paper. He wants to submit the budget himself. So, so there is so because he was dreaming, he thought that he was going to work in a proper economy that like he was teaching at the moves. Mm -hmm. What he teaches in class and what happens are different. Now he's in it. He has to ask for supplementary. He has to, 
to do everything possible to allow the regime survive. It's about regime survival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 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 so there's nothing like efficiency, like borrowing on our behalf. Uh, what, what I think actually is to promise those ones borrowing them that in case we get chance that government changes, we shall not pay back. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, should, that should be the position. No, but not, not to massage and look around. No. You, they are getting bad loans on our behalf. They are not authorized. We shall not pay back. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that should be it. That, that they know hmm. that the Ugandans are against them borrowing and we shall not pay back. And, and that's the question I wanted to, to ask, uh, probably. Uh, what do we give as security for some of these loans? Uh, security, security, or, security, uh, security is you, it's you, it's actually, it's you. You, 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 you. The taxes you pay every night, whether hmm. you buy a matchbox or a pen or a book, is what is security. So security is you, your head. You and know, Damien, a nation is divided by two things. Hmm. Territorial boundaries and its people. Mm. So when a country is borrowing, save for the bad China loans, mm. the security is sovereignty. It is the boundaries, the, the, no. re, the resources of the country and mm. the people. Mm. That's the security for government state <laughs> borrowing. So you are the security. You. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are the market like a goat. <laughs> no. Okay. Now, and Sarah, maybe I'll, I'll bring you on on the, on the same issue. So, what could be the impact of uh, this endless uh, government borrowing on the a struggling economy like ours here? You know, at, uh, at the time we, the economy was opened mm. from COVID lockdowns, the president, I think on two occasions, was telling citizens tighten their belts and be frugal. Because at the time we opened up from COVID, it was the beginning of Ukraine war. Mm. And then the cost of living, the, the, the commodity prices mm -hmm. started shooting up. And the president on two state of the nation addresses said, you must be frugal, spend on what is necessary, mm -hmm. stop extravagance. But did he do the same for government? Mm -hmm. You look at a, an extravagant budget with a broad administrative structure. Even the other day, he appointed a, a presidential advisor on Kato, indigenous Kato, mm -hmm. with a salary of a person to hold mm -hmm. <laughs> 15 million. So is he being frugal? Is he tightening his belt? Mm -hmm. And it's on that basis that I would like to question, as much as we have development of infrastructure in, in, the, in the national NDP plan three, mm -hmm as well as the budget, given the cost of living, given the reduction, I know that URA is posting mm. that they have increased taxes when the citizens are growing poor. I, I, I find that hard to believe. But if URA is posting increase in revenue collections by 10 billion, almost each time they are talking, they add 10 billion. Mm. So why are we still borrowing money? if we are able to generate more. Two, if the country is going through the economic turbulence and with a predicted global recession, which has slowly started taking shape, mm -hmm. can't you postpone development on infrastructure? Is it an emergency that you must construct roads? If you were maintaining the existing ones, I know, mm. but how much trade are we collecting from the roads we have already done? Can yeah. we take stock? Most of the newly constructed roads, other than the accidents that are increasing, you find people drawing cassava. I've driven from Mumbai on two occasions, and when you join in Tubsoga region, you meet cassava, you meet tam the tamarind on the road, and there are fewer vehicles. There is a time I drove from Fort Porto alone. Mm. I found vehicles when I was approaching Kampala. There was no vehicle. So what is the output? So for infrastructure development is important. But is it an emergency? Is it something you must do in times of frugality? Mm. Can't you postpone and say we had this in the budget? But it is not an emergency. So what could, we in this case, what could be the agent instead of uh, focusing on infrastructure at the point? I think if you look at the terms of the loan as presented in the in Parliament, mm -hmm. the the breakdown of ten percent insurance that is that's money for kickbacks. 
there is no bank that can charge 10% insurance on state borrowing. They don't even charge it for individuals. That is money for stealing. If you look at the terms, the, the, the reason most MPs were against approval of that budget, Article 54, 55, and 56 of the Constitution mm -hmm. provide that for Parliament to approve loans, the terms of borrowing must be clear, and Parliament must approve those terms as well. But in yesterday's uh, approvals, the minister said they are still negotiating the terms. So there were no terms. And that approval is unconstitutional. So the, there is an approval before the, the terms agreement. are known. Yeah, so, so the you, terms are not known. So you are, it's a giving an empty check. You so that, that approval violates hmm. the constitution. Interesting. <laughs> so there's a, because uh, that's that's the question, and that's why I had to bring it in. At what point? Why, if you, uh, because the citizens need to know which what is the security that we are putting in there. No, the people are the security for <laughs> for, for for us to. And uh, maybe I would want to bring Chebongas on that one. Uh, uh, what could be? Is there any probably? We are talk this this calls for an increment in the in the public debt. Yeah. In 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 your space, do you see that there is any government probably uh government coming out to say, okay, we have a plan to curb this uh, increasing public debt? Thank you, uh Damian. The the, the reading is that uh as we are going, mm -hmm. as as time progresses. The debt that we are getting seems to, there seems to be no plan anywhere. Mm -hmm. Even the terms that uh, Sarah is mentioning, they are part of, they should ideally inform our sustainability plan mm -hmm. that we are borrowing this for this purpose and this is what we are going and we are going to get back. There's, it, the thing seems to be unclear. Mm -hmm. And that informs you that uh, the end result uh, is, as, is as unclear as anyone probably, any of us would think. Mm. But uh, where, where you, you, if you look at some of our budgets in the previous budgets, the biggest percentage goes to loan service. Loan service. Where we are likely to find ourselves is uh, subsequently that 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 percentage will keep on increasing. Mm. It affects service delivery. It affects the day-to-day -day operation of government. Not to mention the the other expenditures which are not necessarily the frugality which you should be. Uh, executing, mm. so it, it it means then that the amount of the amount of money that will ideally go goes to the service delivery so small that affects the ordinary the, the, the rest of us, mm. Mm. and so to that end, I think the sustainability issues is uh, as far as the 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 people who came up with the whole initiative is that they they, they put up stop gaps to ensure that before you actually borrow the loan. There are people who check it. Mm. Your parliament, who ideally should be checking that and ensuring that uh, for every loan that we pass, first of all, it's it's it's, it's viable, it's necessary, and it's something that can is, is directly contributing to the to the to the growth of the economy, but also the NDP. And so I think we find ourselves in a very very uh, unique situation. Mm -hmm. Where ideally, whereas loans sh should be okay, how they are spent, the terms they are in are very unfair, mm -hmm. I think, to the country, but also to the development. Uh, interesting. Uh, maybe I would want to ask, uh, are there limitations to, to, to the government's borrowing that uh, probably at this point we could say they can't go past this rate of borrowing? You know, the, the, the IMF guidelines mm -hmm. are that no country should borrow above 50% of GDP. Mm -hmm. So that's why IMF raised the flag on Uganda's borrowing two years ago. Mm -hmm. Actually, towards COVID, mm -hmm. IMF and World Bank had raised the flag on, on Uganda's borrowing. And they had the capped money that should be given to government because we were crossing the red line. But when the COVID happened, then they saw the need to save lives and, and, and they decided to release more money. But they had stopped before COVID in 2019. 
So if so, that is the limit. The limit is don't go beyond fifty percent of your mm -hmm. GDP. GDP. Mm -hmm. That's why you see there are there is a lot of politics on the percentage on the declaration yeah. of mm -hmm. the actual public debt mm -hmm. and the manipulation of figures for political convenience and correctness. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Maybe Brian also you probably want to would highlight on that probably the what could be the the, the effects of uh, the overborrowing that we are, we are, we are faced with we now are, we are, we are, to the economy we, struggling we, economy we are, like we are, ours yeah we are already faced we are already in the effects mm. it's not that uh, it's it's not it's it's not that it's because the more you borrow mm. therefore you demanded mm. and like we said you're the one who is. Uh, you are surety or you are the corrector. Mm. You the system. I'm the corrector. You the we are the corrector. So you must make sure that the the, the business you know, because the clients are investing in us. So we must be very productive and pay back. Now that means that, like she said, URI has to increase taxes on us, and uh, that you, you know you know the cost of food. You know the cost of living. So so it means it's just going to be more worse because they are because they have to make us because when the year ends. The, the person who gave, gave you money must give him the profit, the, the, must return back some money, mm -hmm. either in, in terms of interest or or or, or what he gave you. Mm -hmm. So it would mean that what we are seeing as a, it's going to be more worse. We, sh we are not going to go anywhere uh, where we shall have people enjoy enjoy even little little things like food, like milk, like. Even, even the, having, having leisure here, Musafin is saying every time he says, hey, I have increased the uh, taxes on alcohol, so that our time you they pay. But that, that has an influence because the one who was taking beer is going to go for Waraj. And that, that will have health complications, and therefore it ends in the hospital, where they again claim that they are investing and they are not investing. So every tax, so it means that the tax regime is going to be very, very rough because they would have to pay this money. And, and I can... And I can uh, surely say that Uganda is not producing anything to pay this money. Like we do, we're not producing anything to pay this. There's nothing we are doing. That's that's why all their eyes, uh, and uh, of course, ignorantly or politically politically knowing it, all their eyes are in Hoi are in Hoi man Chikube for oil. May it come, may it come, because they know where they are going. It might be hard even sustain even the lives of of their own staff. Mm -hmm. Government has been broke recently, you know, not paying people. Government reaching an extent of not paying people in time. Those are the effects because you're paying loans. It's like you having grown in your home. You know mm -hmm. what it means. You know what happens when the month ends. The phone calls because it is an obligation you have you have to 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 fulfill. To fulfill. So I think that the result of this is going to just to be worsening our situation as a people. But I would want it to be worse for the people first, mm -hmm. so that it goes to government and maybe it collapses because. Because because these loans are sustainable and there's nothing government is doing to make us productive. Mm. We have this population unproductive. We have a population in agriculture unproductive. They are productive. They can eat. They can have everything. But are they contributing to paying this debt? It all ends us with, with you get salaries. It all ends, ends us with, with me and you. So that's why the time I saw on TV, they asked some man, they said, eh, hey, government is stealing money. The man said, ah, ah they cannot steal my money. Me, Zanzi, no more shop. I have mine in my pocket. <laughs> he, put, he said, the government cannot steal my money. I have my money. Hmm. Not because, because he does not feel the, the brute of, of this thing. When you make a contract hmm. of 1.5 million shillings as your salary and they give you 800,000 at the end of the month, that's when you know that it's serious. Because these contracts they make, they say, the person says, we are paying you 8 million. But your real salary is, is three million. Mm -hmm. When you check two million shillings, will go to government as tax or pay as you earn. One million, about one million, will go to NSSF, which they also follow and either borrow or steal from NSSF and to finance their. So, so the effects of, of the working class just has tightened their bills, like I'm saying. Uh, the the informal sector, they have been suffering. They have their own sufferings. But they pay in their yeah, yeah, they pay in their, But you say they don't feel it. You who feel you feel that's why you're discussing it here. Mm. The indirect payment of tax, they will pay tax, but it's not as because you also stay in town. You are you stay in an apartment somewhere. You have been seeing them adding taxes on, on rental taxes. They, they, there's going to be tax of everything. 
social media, phones, everything will be taxed in order for them to... So that is the government's uh, plan to, for payment? No, no, it's not the plan. It's not the plan. It's, it's a plan for their survival. Because if they don't do that, they can't survive. So what is the government's plan for repayment of some of these loans? They don't have a plan. There's no plan. You can't have no plan. I hear NDP 3 or NDP 2, what? There's no plan. That those are, those are um, development plans, but <laughs> repayment plans of um, You know why borrowing is tagged to GDP? Mm. It's tagged to so your, your productivity and the incomes. So when the recent ratio that the Daily Monitor released mm. is, uh, because our total debt, before mm. the new debt they added, mm. is at 65 trillion mm. shillings. So for us to pay back that money, Every Ugandan must contribute 1.5 million. Including the child who has been born today. Yes. So, maybe by the end of the year, that might increase to 2 million. That is the, the source of paying back. Kenya has stopped. Mm. The, the new government has said they will not borrow because they want to reduce the amount of, they lose through servicing. So they want to see how to cut down the costs and pay back loans in order to reduce the serving, servicing of debt. Mm -hmm. Because I think we use about nine trillion. Yeah. Twas, service twas, debt. Twas then. Twas service like just as, as interest on debt. We are not paying back mm -hmm. to reduce the compounded amount. Just servicing the debt. So you you can imagine and the the, I, I, I have seen the minority report mm. on, on, the, on the loan requests of parliament and the, the contribution, no, part of the compounded money we shall pay back. Mm -hmm. If we borrow 1.7 trillion, we shall pay back almost double the amount because we shall pay back 3 trillion. Interesting. And here you have uh, a situation where you're from lockdown. And then these lockdown. people are going to get this money and... Mm. Eat it. Eat it. <laughs> and then you will pay back. You have another issue where you have two districts locked off. Nothing is happening. No, you, you, but no, then no, there is no, a borrowing no, 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 here. You have an issue where, yeah. where, where the Minister of, 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 Minister of Health mm. is complaining that, that the development the the partners are not giving them money. They are passing. They want, they, they want to create the money for COVID. Mm. You want to get money for 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 Ebola and Bangladesh also, mm. so going through other entities which are not government is 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 an it's an annoyance to the Minister mm. of Health. So my question is, okay, Minister of Health, you have a budget. What have you what are you, what are you investing in? If you are saying that these people actually they actually they acknowledge that people are investing in contingency plans and mitigation plans on 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 Ebola, they are accepting it. They're not they're not saying they're doing nothing, but they're saying please give us the money. We we'll do it ourselves. Because they want to have their hands <laughs> dipped into the money. Because when it goes through maybe CSOs, maybe other small uh, partners and other uh, maybe local governments, they know they want at the center. You know, and you know what the center means? Eh? Mm. The center is Nakase. They, they will not get something to pocket. So, so that means that taxes will be increased for some of those sectors that I do. Because they have to get that I, money I, I, back. I, because it's, it's, it's a chain. You see, I'm <laughs> hung. The sale of goods complaining about dominant partners giving money to other entities which are not the ministry. You, and, and you know what they did during COVID-19? I had that uh, IMF and the World Bank thought about life. It did not help lives of people. It was... It was provided by the same group. Actually, that was the time that the Museveni's um, Kameza money increased from about 1 billion to 1.8 billion shillings. It was during COVID-19 and then he would call press conferences and speak about COVID, speak and uh, remember when he had his graphs. Now he was proud that they are, remember him getting proud that they are falling, all that he has maintained. When, when, they, when, when they spiked, they said, Mukadema, you don't hear. Because there was no plan, every money that was gotten in the COVID, was eaten by the Kampala regime. That, that's how they turned uh, uh, Uganda into a military state, which most of you did not see. MP, M, the only place where there was politics was only MPs to pass their, to, to ask for those loans. The only political structure that remained standing in that time was, you, you, saw, you, saw, you saw when, in, I think in Ibunyanga, when the RDC was almost boxing the the LC5 telling him that he cannot move, he's under lockdown. Mm -hmm. So you get people's leaders, put them under lockdown, and borrow on their behalf. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> they got people, leaders, lockdown, mm. 
at i was i was then working at kcc at kcc kcc was allocated 2 billion for covid during that time and it was borrowed money the minister of kampala who, who is under the minister of presidents remained with 1 billion I remember participating in writing a statement where we were asking where is the one billion. When they said that uh, the, uh, the RCC called a meeting with the minister and, and said KCC councillors and the Red Mayor are here by under lockdown for 42 days. That's what happened. It was, I was at this time when I was involved. So, so they borrow, when, when they borrow, still when you speak, you are under lockdown. You wait. Mm -hmm. When, when you speak too much about this run, you're going to go under <laughs> Let's have a short break and uh, we'll come back, uh, still uh, try to put a little spotlight on the, on the borrowing and the way forward, but also we'll be uh, tackling a little on the, on the pension uh, uh, issue of the parliament, the parliament, the parliamentarians and uh, the salaries, which uh, the Speaker of course said was, uh, was never an issue and uh, she disputed it, but we'd love to have a a conversation around it. Let's return and after this break. Digital rights are those human rights and legal rights that allow individuals to access, use, create and publish digital media or to access and use computers, other electronic devices and telecommunication networks. Digital rights include a right to freedom of expression, information and communication through technology, a right to privacy and data protection, a right to credit for personal works, a right to universal and equal digital access, a right to identity, a right to anonymity, a right to be forgotten, and a right for protection of minors, among others. The state's digital rights are frequently violated through various unfair actions, for example, blockage of websites and social networks, theft of credentials, unauthorized use of people's data for personal gain, privacy intrusion, online censorship, arrests and intimidation of online users, internet blockages, and a proliferation of laws and regulations that undermine the potential of technology to drive social, economic, and political development worldwide. It is hence every citizen's responsibility to respect rights of other digital users and to speak out or report to the responsible parties when one's rights are violated. Uh, welcome back from uh, that short break and uh, still a good morning here at uh, the studios and uh, we're discussing issues around parliament, uh, the, the borrowing of government, endless borrowing of government and also the move by parliamentarians to increase their, their pay amid this, uh, the, 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 the economic challenges that we are faced with today. Uh, in the conversation today, please uh, follow uh, this conversation. The hashtag is uh, Focus on Parliament uh, on Twitter, also on Facebook. We are live on our YouTube channel, Civic Space TV. Here we are. We are streaming live. Please be part of the conversations, posting your comments, your, your views, uh, your reactions. We need to, to see uh, this conversation moving to, so that everyone, until uh, the grassroots are uh, uh, who, who get our MPs into these spaces and uh, get to know what they're they up to and what services they're providing them at, uh, at the places they send them. Uh, joined here, of course, my panelists, uh, we're still on, Sarah, uh, Brian, and uh, Timothy, and uh, we need to proceed into this conversation. Uh, we, and at this point, we just need to probably throw some light on uh, what could be the alternative? What is the way forward for, for and uh, how can best can government approach uh, this crisis and probably, in a way, ensure that uh, there is some limitations on, on the borrowing? We are not into, we are not going so much excessive in the borrowing. What should government do to improve the economy, first of all? But also you know, in the way of cabbing <laughs> the, 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 the there, are, there are two aspects of uh, borrowing. The U.S. borrowing has gone above 100 percent, and uh, recently President Biden made a statement saying they can borrow any amount as the United States because they have capacity to pay back. Mm -hmm. Other developing countries are borrowing more money. But they borrow it with clear priorities and mm. pay back within the agreed time. They don't default on loans. <laughs> and that is the point that uh, Biden was making. It does not matter how much money you have borrowed, so long as it's for a clear purpose mm. and you have ability to pay back. In our case, we have limited ability to pay back. That's why you see we lose more money in debt servicing 
and we borrow for a longer time, which also increases the cost of borrowing. But these countries borrow for a short time, pay, because the, pro the population is productive, mm -hmm. raise money in, in, in taxes, and pay back within a shorter time. So they don't spend longer years servicing a particular loan. We have been carrying forward so many loans. That's why our, the interest we pay on loan servicing is high. So one of the ways to curb down the, the, the skyrocketing public debt is to borrow for clear targets and urgent, clear and urgent targets. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have a plan to build infrastructure. But why don't you do that with your domestic revenue? Why don't you do that through public-private partnerships? So that you borrow, maybe to inject in trade, to, for activities that are productive and can pay back as a government. If you borrow the money, for specific tourism venture, and you know you are targeting this number of tourists, if they come per year, you are able to raise that money, and in three years, you pay back that loan and close it. That would be better than borrowing a road where two vehicles drive over to over four hours. You are alone on the road. Yes, the road is good, but I'm alone on the road, and there is no produce being transported on that road. So the output is limited. Where the population is productive, that does not exist. So in my view, like during this time, really, you can cut down some of the long-term projects and wait for the recession to end. And then you resume. After all, there is no emergency. There is no deadline. Mm -hmm. You can construct the roads any time. That shouldn't be something that you do in times of recession. Countries like Ghana, that still cut down government, the size of government. Mm -hmm. The president, after emerging from COVID and then being hit by the, the, the crisis from Ukraine, reduced the government by a third. A third sent away a third of the government and remained with the two thirds to cut down the cost of public expenditure. In our situation, we are doing the reverse. For example, why do we need eight cabinet ministers? Are they the two now? Who knows them? I, I think they are the two now. Who mm. knows them? Today, if you ask, we are in public space. Mm. I don't know a bunch of these ministers. I, I don't even see the work they do. They are not even in public space. The, the, I think uh, the, 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 the constitution the provides that, uh, that is uh, providing employment to people. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> at whose cost is this restriction? That him use his money. Mm -hmm. The constitution provides for twenty-three cabinet ministers mm -hmm. and the possible twenty-three deputy ministers. Can we go back to that size so that we have a cabinet minister and one deputy? You have ministries and you find like there are three deputies mm -hmm. and you wonder what they do. Mm -hmm. The duty in public service work is done by technocrats. Political appointees like ministers provide political leadership. Mm -hmm. So how many people do you need to provide political leadership? You don't need more than one. Mm -hmm. At most two. So that in the absence of one, there is a, a junior minister. But you create three, the, the vulgar, reality is vulgarization of public administration. Then you come to presidential advisors, and most of them have written in public space that they never meet the president. I think we are now about uh, 168. You even come to? Yeah, because <laughs> they spend money. They me, are in the budget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, me, 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 I hear now that this one of Kato now who, now the establishment who sometimes abuses the government. Eh? Of course, and there are others in you know, the affairs and the stuff, but some is known. So, you, for what reason? Mm. That is another wastage of, of, of public funds. I was recently told from good sources that most of cabinet ministers who are dropped, they remain on a payroll, drawing a living allowance. Wow. So, whereas we think we have, yes, we have 80 ministers. There are other people who were formerly political appointees, but must be depend on, on public coffers. So there are also those ones. 
then you have things like birthdays where people are celebrate birthdays maybe for two years with a convoy of 60 vehicles. I don't know whether the MK team, MK is a public officer by virtue of being a soldier. I don't know whether he has declared sources mm. of incomes, of monies he uses mm. for his uh, work that is unconstitutional. Yes, uh, what is the source of their funding? Mm. Well, even if he was getting donations, mm. by virtue of being a public officer, he should declare even gifts to the IGG according to the leadership code act. Mm. Has he declared? And it wouldn't be surprising to find that this is money from the 1.86 billion in the state house. Interesting. Mm. Uh, we were trying to... to, I, I, to... I, am, I, am, I am looking at Sarah, <laughs> thinking that the IGG has the power to quorum host to ask him to declare. <laughs> the IGG has no power, he cannot quorum host it to declare. <laughs> Mm. She should do it. It's she. You see, you see, you see, I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. I'm a constitutional. Okay, okay, okay. And by the way, it shouldn't be IGG to look for public officers. Yes. Public officers should, should look for him. Automatically wow. declare. Yes. And the, it's even an electronic process. Yes. So it shouldn't IGG be looking yes. for officers. All, all, all I wanted to say is that Mohose will not declare mm. and nothing will happen to him as far as his father is still president. And interesting with that, I saw uh, Kenya when the ministers were during vetting, they had to first declare their wealth. Yeah. I don't see it here. Mm, because here, 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 vetting is uh, in a room mm. where they are about. But also, they don't ask about income. But also, they don't ask about income. But incomes. the reason mm. Kenya declares incomes is to enable the public to mark how much money you're going to make mm. when you are serving the people in a public office. So that becomes the best right actually, for public accountability. Actually, actually, I found those politicians uh, somehow, I think, I don't call them, do you know what? How, for example, um, Masari Amdaba did very by saying he has four billion. Mm. Because even if he gets uh, six billion in the next four years, five years, there won't be much complaint. But I think they underdeclared and it will be their problem because... A person like Moses Kulia cannot say it's 500, more common 400. They're just that, that, that. I think you are looking at that money with Uganda now. No, 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 no. I am, I am, I, count, am, I, am by, I, I am, no, no, no. I am at playing by 35 by the way. <laughs> but I, but I, I, I have, <laughs> because, because I, 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 like, the man, in the debate <laughs> told them that he has 800 million. <laughs> I think those guys, uh, one thing I don't agree with them is under declaration of their wealth because. Maybe they wanted to be hustlers like they campaigned, mm. but they should have told the truth like Musari Amudavadi saying, I have my four billion, I have my one billion. Because the money I didn't worry, the money he has cannot be 800, 841, uh, that's what he said. I think that they are going to have their problems, I don't know. They, mm. if, if, because after, after this time, if someone went for them, even if we went for them now, you'd find maybe have two times what they said. But to, to leave Kenya aside, uh, our, biggest, our biggest problem mm. is not parliament. Because like I told him before, I don't consider the parliament to be there. It's not a constitution. Our biggest, our biggest problem is that our, the power we use does not come from us. So we cannot check on our politicians like the Kenyans, for example, do. Because we should be able to say that you, minister, you president, you cannot appoint 82 ministers. But when members of parliament met, met, met in Kororo, after they said before they I think before they swearing in the caucus of of NRM met, they said we want to increase the members of, members of cabinet by two ministers. Mm. Vote on it. We shall go to parliament and put stamp on it. Mm. They voted for it and increased from 80 to 82. Start of this cabinet. If Museven remains in power for the next 10 years, we shall, we shall, we shall be uh, we shall be having a cabinet should be parliament. Actually, the, our numbers, our numbers in cabinet <laughs> should be our parliament. Mm -hmm. our, our numbers, because the, why we don't know them? Yes, our numbers in the cabinet should be the numbers of having the, our eighty-two are enough to be members of parliament of Uganda. Mm -hmm. India, with all those with about billion people, they have about five hundred MPs. We have five hundred and twenty-nine here. It's a very big problem. That's one. Two. All of these public officers, sir, has been talking about another cause of destruction, because now I work, for, I work for myself and by myself. To make sure that I earn a living is the is the is the, the noise and the inconvenience I get on the roads mm -hmm. while going to work or for meetings. 
there are about five people in this country where when they are moving, every car must stop. If Janet is passing somewhere, they must stop. If Mo is passing somewhere, they must stop. If the father is passing somewhere, they must stop. I also saw recently uh, Arupo, whom I thought she was coming from Morago, or Sand, mm. stampede, can't stop. What are you fearing? What is the size of Apongon? It had about five cars. Yeah, mm. I don't think Arupo is like that. Yes, no, no, no. I, I, I was shocked that it was Arupo. Mm. Me, my shock, my shock was that it was Arupo. Maybe someone said, maybe has been in an interested community, he wanted to show power. Mm. Maybe. But I've always known her convict have two, three cars, that's one. Two, then uh, driving and hooting everywhere and stopping cars and causing jam during, during the morning time. As if they're going to do anything. One time, I was in a taxi and uh, there was that stampede and the taxi driver wanted to stop. I said, ah, again, that you go, because these guys are not running to work for you. They're going to go to steal. Like, if we, are, if we continue to allow the, these cars that they drive, because they're not going, the meetings they're going for are those meetings of borrowing money, getting a kickback, that's what they're going to do. And, you, and the citizens have allowed them, as they, as they surpass, as you go to work to pay the back of the debt, you are allowing them to smoothly run to office, to steal more and borrow more. Hmm. But on investment, a, a clear government should be investing on production now, not on consumption. Hmm. Our biggest problem is that we invest heavily, on consumption, state house budget consumption, uh, that those roads consumption. Can can we give, for example, can we decide to say, for example, say, okay, a farmer in Kabale has one acre of, of uh, sweet potatoes, Irish potatoes, they produce about four, four sacks. Can we consider making sure that these, these guys who produce four sacks produce 10 in that same Therefore, provide uh, chemicals, provide fertilizers, and improve, and improve one, improve their lives, but also improve the country's cap capability to pay back these loans. But rather than say, I am going to invest in a road somewhere in the bush, in, somewhere where people don't even pass. Maybe so, some of that will also go to PDM. Possibly the model. Mm. No, the, 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 problem, the problem I have again is not the only model. The problem I have with the Ghanaians is the, in Uganda they say uh, on the roads, mm. one, there was the Sarahs where, where I think we could have seen it. There was in Tunguka. In Tunguka was a program of government. That was the first thing we seven put in place, mm -hmm. claiming. Not and 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 in every election of Uganda, mm. there is something that starts. Mm. Then there was NADs, you know, NADs about 2006, I think. Mm. Yes. For every election in Uganda, there is a scheme that is started. Mm. Then there was a Myoga. There are many other things. So what is a Myoga now? Mm. Because a Myoga is also supposed to make young people get employment, be rich, bang on. So even in Paris, we have been seeing stories of that they want to check on private development funds in, uh, I think, Buko somewhere in eastern Uganda. And the public officers had to run to Kenya. <laughs> so when, when they said they, they said they went to Kenya, I said no, they did not run to Kenya. Those guys went to exile. If 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 you leave your country as a fugitive and you're free, you have gone to exile. You have not you have not run to Kenya. You are an exile. You are an exile in Kenya over such things. So so already already when you look at the stories mm. or coming from PDM, it's not something that's going to work for Ugandans. Because, because anyway, it was not created to work for Ugandans. It was created as a way to see for the funds and like people to vote for Museveni in 2021. As we go towards 2026, if he wants to run again, he maybe bring something, maybe ready card, what, and uh, pass their money, and uh, that will be life. I'm just joking. All the white card, all the white elephant, but he'll, he'll bring something. He'll bring something to say you're going to make money because it is. It is his habit to do two things. A yet direction, create a new platform, tell people make money. But also uh, tell people that the first oil will be a year before the elections. Oil, the first oil drop was supposed to come out in 2010, that's what he had said. It went to 2015, it went to 2020, 2020, 2020 now it's 2025. And his supporters and fans blind remain saying, First oil 2025. You look at the heads. Do they know what is happening there? Do they know? 
you look at it and say this one is just bad. <laughs> because the same the same heads we are saying mm. 2020 we have the first oil drop. That's now 2025. No, no, it's 2025. Now, 2025 and, and of 20... course, uh, our charter of uh, fiscal responsibility has uh, the charter has the ca it captures oil. And, no, uh, of course, it captures oil, and 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 oil is one of the things that mm. that that Museveni is hinged on, saying that he must get that the money. revenue. Should the come revenue from the... is to come from oil, mm. not knowing that the, 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 there is also a, a global campaign and a global movement against fossil fuels, and actually, could even have oil and it's cheaper than you expect. And make losses. Hmm. Uh, yes. we, our, we are trying to finalize on the what would be the way forward or how the approach the government should really use to avoid borrowing. So, for me, four things. Hmm. One, we need to have a total overhaul of our loan system. We need to review the loans that we've had. If you actually look at some of the loans that uh, have been approved in the past, the terms, you can't understand how it actually came to pass. We need to look into them. There needs to be a total audit on all of them as we stand. Mm. Two, we need to implement the frugality principle as preached by the president. There seems to be, and, and Sarah has mentioned a lot of them in terms of staff, the, 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 the leaders we don't need and the, the more fast expenditure by the state. That needs to be cut to allow for the excess mm -hmm. to go into other development work. Three, the state needs to focus on how to improve the citizenry, how to, to, to promote production so that you can tax. You can't tax a dying cow. If we can be able to breed to ensure that we support, create avenues, promote it in terms of having to, to support the existing businesses, really create an enabling environment where we can have a source of income for the masses. Then that we can, we can, we can tax and do some of those development work. And lastly, I, I had Sarah, I think that could have been on Twitter, how citizens go into some of these, some of, some of these uh, lending agencies mm. to reach there. Stop and pro, I, although I've seen <laughs> Kenya try, some of it, some of its citizens tried reaching out to to, to those. To, I think I met one mm. bank, but they were not very successful. So it seems not to be a very viable path. Maybe. But maybe, Kenya has reduced uh, lending. Them, yeah. So th that was. But that it was that was under yeah. Uru, but now mm. they've said I think they only they can only borrow for emergencies yeah. because mm. they the approach is stop mm. borrowing, mm. use the revenues generated in the country mm. and try to pay back the already existing. I, I think I think the citizens might not need to go there by by uh, to face them to do what. We can shoot online petitions, we can shoot social media campaigns, mm. media campaigns. The problem people think this also these lending uh, institutions need to be credible. We could also blackmail the quote unquote blackmail this because they they are giving us they are giving thieves money mm. not without our, our authorization. Mm. So a person if I decided to run a campaign, for example running a campaign to, to tell people not to fund uh, the construction of the pipeline, mm. we have not I've not gone to IMF, I've not gone to uh, a bank, but we are campaigning. Mm. People can campaign against something whether they go there physically or not. A campaign is, a com is really getting the message clear that the people of Uganda don't want those loans. Mm. And you can you don't have to go there physically or meet uh, the president of IMF and take a and greet them. No. Just need to sit here in Uganda and campaign against it. And, and, and by the way, uh, you see, the next thing, those things don't work. Not until they are hit. Mm. You can actually campaign against them borrowing. And I think the, the if Sarah suggested it, I think the, the quicker we think about it and do it, the better. Because the more we remain quiet and silent, we have agreed. Mm -hmm. The moment we keep quiet and looking on as they borrow this money. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a very, very brilliant idea. Having a program to campaign against government, uh, borrowing money again on behalf of when we don't know, mm -hmm. when, they, when they are wrong. It's just a very, very brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why the citizens have to take, they can take part in that. Mm -hmm. They can take part in that wherever they are, whether on radio, whether on TV, whether on their social media accounts, whether in the bars, whether in the market, 
ese tebage na kufuna sente ndara kuva wa bwitu tuzata tuzetanga because they came to be boring on behalf of us when we are suffering so i think i think i think because it doesn't make sense for for the rush actually if sarah did did she should look at it properly and start to integrate in the programs and people campaign again if you say it you said a very brilliant idea don't just allow it just die like that because that's 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 the way to go actually I must have thought about it. People should campaign against the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because because it doesn't make sense. You're rushing to ask that they borrow, mm. but you've not looked, you've not agreed final on the terms. Mm. So now the money will come and it will disappear. Yeah. No, even, the, even the, you see, you see, there is there is people who are used the, mm. the young people. There, there is the, 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 someone told me he borrowed money from an app mm. online. Mm. And they say that they told him there are seven days you pay back. Now he borrowed 60. Those are the only looking at it, they say 60. Mm. They gave him 45. He didn't pay for five days, he became 100. He said, I'm also not going to pay this money because it's illegal to charge prices so on a own, whether online or physical. Mm. And he didn't pay. He also defaulted. He has defaulted. Typical of our country. <laughs> So, so you're, you're making so, your final conclusion. Last, lastly, I think is is yes. in finding ways in which we can hold mm. some of these entities accountable. Mm. Transparency in terms of borrowing. I think because there's a, the, 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 it could be that the loans being borrowed are for right purposes, but the communication mm. probably the, the the borrowers have a totally something different in their mind, and the the, the citizenry. So there seems to be a very opaque. Timothy, when you read the minority report of uh, opposition in parliament, mm. they even wanted the roads, the, the programs where money is going to be... You heard that? Mm. No, to be mentioned in mm. detail. Hey. And they were not mentioned. Mm. And they were saying they don't want this money to come to the consolidated fund, mm. sit, maybe accumulate interest to be stored. Mm. Even the readiness to implement mm. not does not exist. Mm. Exactly. So you, you see, in in, in there's ten percent insurance. <laughs> I think there's there's a bit of <laughs> that's, a bit, that's it's, it's, kickback money. It's, it's uh it's and even if it was kickback, there has to be clear communication and clear strategy. Because it's our money, we are going to pay it. So you want to to eat them to to say that uh, then, this is going to be kickback. In the past place, it should not be there. It shouldn't be there. We should not <laughs> give <it> kickbacks <laughs> for that. Mm. So it is. Uh, yeah, they are, it's money for brokers. Mm. Money for brokers. And, and brokers, if you followed them, mm. their footsteps would, mm. their their actually would end up in uh, state house. You see the problem mm. with either either, either, they, mm. either the either the in-laws, the children, mm. what they must be. Up, they see that the ones who who are always in those shit, who are the brother. The the problem with the less developed countries like Uganda is that the leaders also become merchants in the middle. So at times you find that kickback is mm. even going to the person who should be thinking critically about such expenditures yes. and the burden to the taxpayer. That is money paid for them not to think. <laughs> <laughs> so and, no, and, and, uh, and uh, as we are, because we are getting into the conclusion, uh, it, I've been thinking through, could, be, could it be that now parliament has okayed this move They've approved the yeah, approved uh, the, the, the loan, but also as a bait for them to to probably in a way of... But uh, some entities also get kickbacks. Yeah, they get kickbacks, but mm -hmm. it, it, it was, get, it's, you see, this it's, also feeds into uh, what that, our, our next conversation, our, our last really issue on, uh, on the pension and the, and the I probable increment. Mm -hmm. Could it be that uh, they had to pass it because they also have something they are, they are tabling that should uh, also get a nod from the executive. You see, because now that's where... No matter it's a bribe. MP is some. I'm not saying all. Mm. But it's normal no, for... You, you, you can say majority. No, mm. It's normal for the executive to bribe the members of the legislature mm. to pass some of these unquestionable things. So now we are, we are discussing, we, we want to get onto the issue. It's, we are struggling as the economy. The economy is struggling. Now we've been into, going into borrowing. But then you have the, the bill that is being uh, tabled to, to increase t almost 10%, okay, 10% onto their pension and, and you know. So uh, do you, is it the right move for, for Parliament to do this right now in the struggling economy? The, 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 the one, I, would, I, I think 
when when you're going to eat with a uh, satan yeah. you use a rado you don't use a teaspoon because a rado will help you to be at a distance they they are seeing the executive still headed by the chief executive himself who is the chief priest of Guelph, and I call him sometimes they they see it and they, now they're asking them because you see it's it's a it's it's, it's a dealer's house so if Damian gets something for me they funny that move wa where do I you see that that's the that's the mentality that's the spirit i think yeah. if the executive is stealing this money me who is passing it where do i get my money from mm. and oh. and my stay is not is not uh, really is it guaranteed guaranteed hey. so pension is so, so, guaranteed so what where do i get my own thing yeah. in all this deal in all these deals and therefore they 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 would they would want to get it one as a form of bribe but also as a form of also them having stolen something because and and for and for them there was a form of stealing because it is roughly agreed so i think the problem is that when people above them are stealing the military officers are stealing money from defense the ministers are stealing money for health everybody around them is stealing and they are in the same space and for them they have nothing to gain from the stealing they also want to do something that will make them have some money and 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 the solution to it is just one deconstructing the whole government putting a, 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 a proper government in place and the, and the parliament of the people with fewer members first of all and and running down all these things but as far as the status the state we are in this status this state where we are as it is expect increase of their salaries the increase of i think seven and and other people must be planning on how members of parliament will be like 700 people in the next parliament they are building a bigger parliament you have seen them those are the things that they are that will try them how yeah. to see it how that's it so I, i want you to think around those areas mm -hmm. because because even even at workplaces where where people are stealing money where, where the chief executive is stealing money the accountant is stealing money he said also that even the sweeper will steal some money or someone who cooks food Will not bring if they say buy four kilograms of meat, they might buy 3.5 kilograms because everybody is stealing. But where there is transparency, people know that you don't do this here. Mm -hmm. And where we are in that in, in, the, in that kitchen of theirs, it is that dirty. And everybody who is there is going to be dirty and to be mess. The community has to be mess. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, Chemogis, we, we saw last year, you know, when, when parliament, when they push for something, they usually want to get it and they always get it. Mm -hmm. Last year they increased their budget on uh, on uh, travel, uh, travel allowance. Yeah, travel and yeah, their allowances on travel on the budget, and uh, from 20 billion okay to 20 billion, which was about 420 billion. Now the budget is 420 billion now, mm -hmm. and there is this uh, the pension that is, of course, uh, the president uh, kicked it back, but of course they will have to re look through and retable it. Do are we seeing an increment happening? of the what in the pension of the pension, pension. Mm. uh, uh they, they have considered the bill and uh it was sent back to did the they remove that increment no they no. didn't they did not it's within it's within but <laughs> i think the interpretation i think from the house mm. is that the pension as it increases does not affect the who is the, contributing to that increase of the pension government it's government yeah but you see it's unconstitutional mm. A bill which has a charge mm. on the consolidated fund must be cleared yes. by finance. Mm. It wasn't cleared, mm. yeah. so it, it can mm. be overturned by courts. Mm. It's unconstitutional. Mm. But I know that this parliament, you know, one time I was uh, watching the, the live proceedings, <laughs> and the speaker said that they should also, among the things they should do, is also to give courts work. Mm -hmm. And I felt sad, really. Mm. As a, a person who is number three in the country, mm -hmm. you should conduct yourself with a sense of responsibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that that was too careless a statement for yes. a speaker it, to it, make. It, Moreover, when chairing a legislative mm -hmm. body, mm -hmm. a body whose function is to promote constitutional mm -hmm. governance mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. And there are other things they've been doing, like the, the now contested the Computer Misuse <laughs> Amendment Act which seeks to challenge a decision of Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Yet Article 98 of the Constitution is very clear. It prohibits Parliament from making laws that tend or attempt to alter the decisions of court. So you preside over such a Parliament. One, you make a clear statement that courts also need work to do. Mm -hmm. 
Two, you would start doing things that contradict the Constitution. Yet the Parliament, if you read Article 79, it's the only body in this country charged with promoting constitutional governance mm -hmm. and protecting the Constitution. Very unfortunate. Very and included in their author. Of, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. very unfortunate mm -hmm. for a speaker to, mm -hmm. to do such things. And, and, and the, the concern is, is, it the, is the timing right? Or we no longer have to worry or think about uh, what is happening in the economy for as long as some individuals are really benefiting. Is the timing right for the MPs? No, but what are you talking about for mm. Damien? The president, after saying that citizens should tighten their belts, mm. he bought two latest model of executive he, lenses, he was, known as Beatles. Mm. He bought Ceremonial. them. They cost yeah. about $3 million. Yeah. When he did that, this, the parliament also bought ceremonial vehicles. That was after the president. Mm -hmm. When you are traveling, the airport is full of technocrats traveling. And when they travel, most of these people mm -hmm. per day, they earn about $600 and above. Mm -hmm. Depending on what level they are on, I think that's the minimum. So somebody travels for two weeks. Mm -hmm. That is about $6,000 in per diem. So what forgot are they talking about? There is no forgot on the part of this regime mm -hmm. today. The ones who should tighten their belts are me and you, not them. <laughs> and we tighten, as we tighten our belts, for them they open their belts and increase. All MPs are mm -hmm. traveling mm -hmm. almost a month. Mm -hmm. Every, every MP has Inc a Including parliamentary staff, including, like, 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 they, and there and is no forgot. Forgot is for the citizens, suffering citizens. Uh, so as we, we wind up, we just need to have our final thoughts on uh, probably what should be the way forward and probably to our listeners, our viewers, on, uh, on, probably, uh, on what government should do better for, for us as a people, but also to stop this ever-increasing borrowing that is happening. Well, me, I, I think President Museven the way he has conducted himself over the years to do elaborate patronage, <coughs> making handouts, his trademark, moving around, throwing money at poor people all the time, he cannot reverse that trend and be frugal. So if Ugandans need a frugal government, then they need to look beyond President M7 because he cannot be frugal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. That, that's a very good thing from Sarah. Because now, it's, 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 you do not advise people who don't listen. You don't tell people. Th you, you don't make recommendations when really knowing that they will not be taken. So we are just, in a, we're just quarreling just so that people know that actually what, where they have hope, there is no hope. So that their hope is somewhere else. And they must organize wherever they are. And they must look at what to do. And they don't even have to wait for the, for the calendars of President. Because Museveni has his calendar of 2021, 2026, 2031. 20, now the sun has entered it. We don't know the candidate, the only candidates running around. Nobody touches them. People must look at them as enemies of Uganda. Because, yes, they are. They have stolen enough. They have abused our people. Killed many in November. Last November, last November, one, we had bodies lying everywhere. Nobody has been brought to book. Money is being stolen right, left and center. People continue to, to, to disappear every day. And now even the remaining things that people could say, we shall start from here, when maybe government changes, are being killed because have to be, you can get a government which is paying and cannot even sustain the payments, this guy, uh, the debts these guys have accrued. Now the solution is the people of Uganda working together and making sure that they put a government in place it is accountable to them. Because this one is not accountable to them because they did not put it there. This one is a Ghana government. So the, mom, the moment we deal with Ghana rule and go citizen rule, we shall have a, a clear government, responsible government, where people know that the people have power. People without power cannot give recommendations to the government that uses guns. And they don't want to be one of them to give them recommendations and help. Because I'm not, he has one of the advisors. Let him go to those ones. Me, I cannot start advising this government because it's hopeless to advise it. You've advised the people. Yes. Okay. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Damien, and thank you for this conversation. 
I just need to emphasize it, especially to the, to the citizenry, that not all is lost. There is still hope. This is our country. Unless there is, and for, for many of us who this is the only country, we can only work hard towards ensuring that we make this country better by holding the, the, the current, the, the existing structures, the existing government accountable by, by demanding for better services, for better, better governance. And I think part of this include what actually what we are doing today is to continue having these conversations, is continue pushing, is continue demanding for better accountability and systems within the government. And so I think that even when we are talking about the, the aspects of loan, we can't shy away and run away and say, no, 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 I think we, we, we wait for the next, for the, for the coming government. I don't know when it will come. Mm -hmm. we, we find ourselves here today. And the only way is to continue pushing is to continue demanding and is to continue ensuring that as we play our part, hold the leaders accountable within parliament where probably is out, is to, is to citizen it to understand that uh, our, our constitution provides our members of parliament with four major roles. Of, there, there, there are four major roles for, for parliament. And that includes legislation, appropriation, oversight and representation. And so I think that even with this kind of spaces, it's just to ensure that uh, the public get to understand these roles, specifically for the, for, the, for the parliamentarians. And that's where they get the mandate to approve some of these loans. Either they do it wrongly or through maybe excitement or whatever. I think it's to understand that and how to hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Timothy, uh, Brian and uh, Sarah. And also to our viewers out there, uh, thank you very much for being uh, followers of uh, this uh, uh, show, uh, uh, Focus on Parliament. Uh, this show, we're supposed to have uh, uh, MPs, uh, always and always on this show, but uh, it gets a little complicated and hard to, to have them. They, they seem to have uh, quite a lot of uh, commitments here and there, but we shall try as much as possible to at least have a sitting or former MPs to come and share with you uh, what is happening. We intended, uh, and our intention is to always spotlight uh, the parliament and uh, bring to you issues that are affecting um, and issues are happening around our parliament because these that are happening around parliament also affect you as a citizens out there. Uh, let's follow the conversation We're on Twitter. Hashtag is a uh, focus on parliament, uh, civic space uh, TV, uh, YouTube channel, uh, Facebook, we are, we are streaming live. And uh, from here and their crew, my crew uh, behind there, we need to say thank you for being our followers and uh, we meet uh, next week. Mm -hmm.